Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. We have here the newest Jean-Paul Gaultier fragrance. This was released in 2016. And of course, this is a flanker of the ever popular Le Mal, which was released in the mid nineties. This one is called Essence de Parfum and it's Le Mal Essence de Parfum. So it is a flanker of the original. Now, a few things that surprised me about this fragrance, first of which the perfumer is not Francis Crookjohn. We know that Francis Crookjohn has done pretty much all of the flankers up until last year in 2016. He's done the original. He's also done Ultra Mall. He's done Fleur du Mall. He has done Le Beau Mall. And then I know last year, 2016, when they came out with Popeye, um, that was done by Natalie Graciacetto. And then this one was done by Quentin Biche. Quentin Biche has done Ultra Zest by Terry Mugler, which is the orange bottle right here. He's also done Angel Muse. And I know he's done a couple fragrances for Tal Libre de Range. Uh, I think one of them is La Fin du Monde, which has a popcorn note. Very, very unusual, but very cool too. Um, so I'm excited to talk about this one. I mean, it's classified as um, an Oriental Fougere, and that's because of the dominant note of lavender. I do think there's a lot more than lavender going on in this composition. We know that the original Le Mal features a very heavy dose of lavender. Not only lavender, it has lavender, Lavender, vanilla, and then one other note. Oh, that's right, mint. So in this fragrance, not only do we have those three notes, but I think there is a lesser concentration of them, but they also amplified some other spicy notes that I'm really excited to talk to you guys about. Let's go ahead and start this review off by taking a look at the presentation. So I think we're all familiar with this presentation here. You have this aluminum tin. You have the name of the fragrance and the company, and then you have a little apparatus on the inside that kind of holds the bottle in place so it doesn't rattle around too much. Uh, some people have called this kitschy, but listen, it's been around for 20 plus years. Uh, with the release of the original Le Mal, people are still buying it, people are still adoring it, whatever. Here we have the bottle, uh, and again, it has that signature stand. It looks really cool, comes out pretty easily. Jean-Paul Gaultier engraved into the stand. And then you have this cool little stopper. I think it looks much nicer than the original. It says Jean-Paul Gaultier. You pull it out, kind of like a pin. And here it's a more sort of chiseled look than the original. The original is much rounder. Uh, the sprayer for this one is fantastic. It's amazing. Really nice distribution. And that was the presentation for Le Mal Essence de Parfum by Jean-Paul Gaultier. So first things first, I just have to give a very special thank you to my friend Carlos. This is actually not my bottle. Carlos let me borrow this bottle since New Year's Eve, I wanna say. So I've had it for well over a month now and I've worn it quite a lot. So Carlos, thank you so much. I'm gonna leave his information down below. But with this fragrance in particular, I really like it and I know you know, recently with uh, the company not enlisting Francis Crook John's help in composing some of these flankers, that left me with a bit of trepidation, right? I was a little hesitant, like, is this going to come out smelling like the original Le Mans? And the truth is, it doesn't really smell like the original Le Mans, the same way that the Popeye version doesn't really smell like the original Le Mans. But that doesn't necessarily make it a bad thing. With this one, you are gonna get some of those same notes like the lavender and the mint and especially the vanilla. There are some other sweet notes in here like cinnamon and tonka bean where as it dries down, the sweetness really starts to come out. But what I like about this fragrance is that it doesn't fully venture into gourmand territory Instead, you're also going to get a lot of spices. And the most dominant spice that you're gonna get from this is the note of cardamom. Now we know cardamom is used in a lot of other designer fragrances, uh, probably the most popular of which is La Nuit de Lam by Yves Saint Laurent. And yes, it does give that La Nuit de Lam vibe if you would imagine a fragrance that is much sweeter without necessarily being a gourmand. Now I like that because I think that in doing so and not making it so sweet, we're accomplishing a few different things. The first of which is that it's not gonna smell puerile or juvenile or childish or immature, that it's going to retain that level of sophistication plus make it very attractive. And I think because of the sweetness, people are gonna be attracted to this. But then there's also that added spicing nuance and there's costas in here and I'm sure there are a bunch of other spices used as well, but most predominantly that cardamom note that gives it that layer of sophistication, but allows it to be worn dressed up as well as dressed down. So what I think it does is it enhances the wearability of the scent too. 
Listen, my wife really likes this one. I've worn this a few times lounging around the house. I haven't really worn it in public, mostly in the comfort of my own home, although I do believe I wore it to work once, but I digress. And my wife really likes this one. She goes, I like what you're wearing today. But my wife also gravitates towards sweet fragrances as long as she's not the one wearing them. So I like this one. It's not as sweet as the original Lamal. I feel like the original Lamal, yes, despite the fact that it is classed as uh, a fougere with the lavender and everything. I think the original Lamal is kind of sweet because of that vanilla note. This one, it's kind of on the same level, but there's more going on in here. It's multifaceted, multidimensional. I think it's really well put together. So let's go ahead and finish things off by taking a look at my rating. First up, I took a look at the uniqueness and the overall smell, and this fragrance is super unique. Yes, there are times when it reminds me of La Nuit de Lombe by Yves Saint Laurent, or even CH for Men Privé by Carolina Herrera, but at the end of the day, it's such a different fragrance from the original Le Mans, and that's because there's a different perfumer who worked on it. Longevity on this one is superb, and I think the name sort of conveyed that to begin with. You're gonna get eight plus hours. Projection is really good for like the first three to four hours. This stuff is loud, so you can afford to spray a bit more conservatively when wearing this one. Versatility is really good because of those spicing nuances at the top. I would even recommend uh, wearing this one formally, although I think you can wear this one casually as well, as long as you can afford it and it's not breaking the bank. And I don't think it's that pricey anyway. And we should be seeing a decrease in price uh, in just a little bit. You should be able to find it on websites like Notino and Forever Lux in just a little bit. Also, in terms of versatility, I think this one would work really well for the colder weather, uh, just because it does pack a punch. And I think anybody of any age can wear this. And despite the fact that it is shaped like a men's torso, I think a woman could pull this off as well. But yes, it is marketed for men. If I were to give this fragrance an overall score, I would probably give this one a five out of five. I think this is a really good scent. I don't think it's too sweet. I don't think it's too spicy. I don't think it's too evocative or reminiscent of the original. I think it's a unique concept. I think it's unique and, and, and different. And I think the perfumer Quentin Biche did a really good job on this one, you know? So um, I do really like this one and I would highly encourage everybody here to go out there and give it a shot especially if you're a fan of fragrances like La Nuit de Lum and CH for Men Prevay. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. That was my review of Le Mans Essence de Parfum. Have you tried this scent? If you have, let me know. Leave a comment down below. Or do you favor any other Jean-Paul Gaultier scents? Let me know. Leave a comment down below. Also, please don't forget to rate and subscribe for future videos, top 10s, giveaways, unboxings, and a lot of other fragrance-related content. Remember, I smell well so you can smell good. We'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.